Is that a question or a statement? <laughs> when you said when you, when you record rising, you know you're rising, you put your lift down and talk because you don't have a bottom lift. Does it sound like I do? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> You've answered your own question, my friend. You're Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> it's logic. You don't even need a watch. You're a genius. Look away the hero and have a great life. <laughs> Uh, I've only done one, but I've done it. Don't do it and don't do it anymore. Uh, Who hasn't asked a question? Oh, God. Okay. Yes, she's been waiting. Are you right now? Me? No. Okay. Out of all the Sailor Moon series or seasons, which one did you voice? Does anyone know what you're S, S, S. S and S, S. See? I knew it, didn't you? This guy in the orange shirt just got out of prison. He's <laughs> <laughs> new black. Go. Can you say, can you yell Rukia's name in Khan's voice? Of course I can. Rukia! Rukia! Oh, I don't know so much. I just want to come out for lazy. Wow! Wait, baby. This is what I do. You think I'm a perverted bear? I'm not a bear. I'm a lion. And I am perverted. You guys do a lot of villains? Ooh. Uh, if you did me enough, I'll do anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well. Villains are the best. I, 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 don't, know. I don't know about you, but to me, no one's the best of them. The closest thing I've come to a villain was a character named Dr. Riddles in an anime series called Zash Bell. <gasps> anybody know it? Yeah! yeah. Okay. Zash Bell, the villain Dr. Riddle talked like this, and he had a little friend, Kidda. And he would ask him a question and send it, it would okay. set him up. And no matter yeah. what question he gave him, and Kiddo would answer yeah. it. He'd say, Am I right, Dr. Riddle's right? Dr. Riddle would look at him mockingly and say, Kidding! And then, of course, Kiddo would go, Oh! Dr. Riddle's was obviously a masochist. <laughs> and yeah. Kiddo was now in the health center. I did a crazy witch called Wicked in uh, Cyberspace. And she was, yeah, so she's just crazy. Well, hacker, look at me! No, wait, that's not the ghost. Well, hacker, look at you! Better still look at me. <laughs> and she just loved herself so much. And she always, I'm so losing my voice right now. I'm just getting over uh, a strep throat. Oh, 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 yeah! <laughs> So what you call as a husband, so this is probably smart. Nice What's that? I do. Nice job. See? Oh, he's huge! My Jimbo is a big boy. It's all that. It's huge. Yeah, but I would say playing for me, playing villains is the most fun that I ever have. Because they just never win. And whenever they lose, they're just so... They can't believe it. Like, the whole world is just like... I don't usually get to play villains because I usually play either the Darian kind of guy who's kind of a jerk sometimes, or just not the smart guy, or not the not smart guy. And I don't think he knows. You know, I just, they don't. Like right now, this is this is my audition tape. And I would say it's the, the vulnerable uh, uh, Canadian nice guy. Thank, thank you, right? Yeah. Yeah, you've got that on the match. I hear it. I cast you like this is the nice guy. This is the buddy. I'm, I'm always like the best friend. Yeah. The guy that really doesn't want to kiss. She realizes she should. That's right. Thank you. Again, my agent. See? <laughs> <laughs> so the last question is kind of answers the first part because he claims they as Princess Kazuya and Sailor Moon will be parts nice. But you're never accredited in that role, so I'm wondering how much works in the industry when you don't accredit it. See, I don't think I did play them. This is the really weird thing. Because you do a lot of little characters and stuff here and there, and then there's this, and I'm going, um, I don't think I did that. And somebody actually told me once who did, and 
and now I can't remember who it was, which is terrible. It's a bad story, Linda. I know. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know why they, they gave you credit for that. They also gave you credit for being a Sesame Street thing, which was not me. <laughs> it was Morgan Freeman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm getting on your credit. Morgan Freeman, though. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Uh, I'll just add that I did play another villain named um, Venom, who was a Spider-Man's alter ego. I was to play Venom. So I got to play Spidey first, and then I got to play Venom, 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 and he got Spider-Man. Nothing tasted better. Alright, so next question. Wow, oh, delicious. Yes. Uh, who has an answer? I've seen a lot of answers. Who has had a, a question answered? Yo, you remember here and then I'll give you a minute. Yes. Okay. We just had five minutes left. Oh, five, so it's a speed round. It's going to be quick answers to good questions. I have a question for all three of you. What is the most challenging thing that you guys have had to do in voice acting? Because I know some voice actors find like certain shouting to be really strong. Next question. <laughs> Okay, uh, honestly, truly, my hardest thing was uh, uh, reading. I was a horrible reader, didn't read my first book until I was 23, and I, I, I skirted through school. I didn't really graduate high school, so I was very afraid. Uh, with scripts, you can take a lot of time with them, but when you don't get scripts and you have a cold read, it's really scary. And uh, the person who used to do the Care Bears voices said, get the paper delivered to your house every day and read the lab, and I did that for quite a long time. And I worked on, on, on that, and my reading became better so and so that that person was the person that hired me for seven years. One of the most things for me was to be, I was one of the Care Bears in the movies. And there was, I was a champ there. <gasps> so much. So we had, and all the women were in this room. There's like eight of us doing all the different little boy and little girl voices. And everyone gets in your head. And suddenly somebody's doing like a really cute little one like this, and you're supposed to be sort of down here like this or something like that. And your mind is going, I don't know what I sound like. I don't know what I sound like. <laughs>
Jeez, you know, some of them are the weirdest villains on the planet. Like, yeah, they're they're so weird. I know, they were hilarious. One of them was the, that nutcracker. Yeah, they were. Yeah, oh, that was shooting nuts out of the top. <laughs> <laughs> I hated Dr. Smith, Smith and Lost in Space. It's an old sci-fi show. Look it up! Wow. I think it was a I'm going to get through. I mean, we got three more. We're going to do you and the red hair, you and the blue sweat jackets. Have you had one yet? And you. You'll be our last three. And then and if you have other questions, you can stay afterwards because we're signing autographs and we're happy to have you here. So, red at first, and then gentleman with the beard, and then you with the speed round. This is a speed round. Ready? Red at go. Alright, so have you ever been like really attached to a character or like them so much that you'd like, every now and then like have a little bit of like passion or you like really enjoy them? And all this goes to what to do. Does it say it was the last part? Um, this feels really all three chances. Have we ever been so attached to a character that we bring out? Can we bring the voice out in regular conversation? Yeah, go ahead. I'd always be walking around, around the house going, <laughs> and I knew that if I could do that, that I could go in there, but I was losing my voice constantly. So I had a little one year old who would walk around behind me and she'd go, Well, I'm going. While she's going. Yeah. Oh, 
She'll walk her hands. She'll walk her hands. You see, she's in this morning game. She's going to put the germs on her. No, she's a germ on her. You can do the job. I'll be the teacher. You are. Well, you can write what I said. So what it is, uh, uh, is whatever uh, two items you brought, uh, we will sign for free, okay? First two items for free. If you want a picture with us on your cell phone or your camera, that is free as well. Now, any of the photos that we have, any of the merchandise we have, um, we charge, obviously, with the signature. And let's say you come up to me, you go, and I have six Metal Gear DVDs. <laughs> Which has happened. The first two were free, and then each one after that would just be a minimum $10. <laughs> right. Slash my prices from 30 to 25 to 20, I was going to go 15. They said, no, the kids want 10. So that's what I'm doing. So that's for me. Now, these folks have these large, beautiful posters. Yes. And those are going to go for 20, 20 for, the for the posters. And then just 10. And then just 10, maybe on for the breakdown from the 15 to 10 on their, uh, it's kind of a medium size, larger than the postcard. And we I got that right? You got it. Okay. You that. Okay. Posters. We'll figure it out. And then uh, you put uh, Toby and Linda. Uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Shots. We'll call them shots. Shots. $10. But as we know, and I'll say it again, your first two personal items people sign for free, the photo is free. And then merch is pretty much 10 unless you get one of their posters. You also gotta take a picture with Rose. Yeah. Right. She gives you a little like that's $15 if you do that with Rose. Um, we are doing the signings by Rose. So actually, if everyone wants to sign, we're gonna do a giveaway. Yeah. Um, 